everyone. From a poll I previously did on Instagram, I asked if everyone would like to see how to make some banana pudding. Ask and ye shall receive, because here it is. This is definitely a great crowd pleaser because I have made it for many different occasions and all my friends and family all loved it. So let's learn how to make this simple dessert. First, we're going to separate the egg whites and yolks from 8 eggs. I like to crack the eggs on a flat surface, then let them hang off one eggshell, and then transition it to the other until all the egg whites are mostly separated. We want to put the yolks in the pot because we will be heating this up for the custard, so repeat this for 8 eggs. Once we are done separating the egg whites, we will add in our dry ingredients into the same pot as the egg yolks. I goofed and I lost the footage on me putting the dry ingredients in, but I'll list out what you need. We will need 3 4 cups of white sugar, 1 teaspoon of salt, 2 3rd cups of all purpose flour. To this, we're going to add in 2 cups of milk and start mixing it. I use a whisk, but feel free to use whatever tool you like. Once everything is mixed together and you see no dry lumps of flour, we will now add in another 2 cups of milk. The reason we do that is because it's actually easier to mix in part of the milk first to mix all the dry and wet ingredients and then incorporate the rest later. This is a small tip I learned from Chef John from Food Wishes if you want to take a look at his channel. We're going to now put the pot under medium heat and then we're going to give it a stir every now and then. If you don't give it a stir here and there, the eggs can start cooking and then you'll have scrambled eggs. And that's not banana pudding now, is it? This is really important also when the custard mixture starts simmering and I'll show you it right here. You can start to see the bubbles starting to form on the surface of the custard and the custard is slowly starting to thicken as well. At this point, keep a close eye on the custard and keep stirring until it becomes thick like this. The custard is thick enough when you can catch a bit of it with the whisk. Once your custard gets to this consistency, turn off the heat and then add in one tablespoon of vanilla extract and two tablespoons of cold butter. Give everything a good mix until the butter is melted and well incorporated into the custard. After that, set this pot aside as we let it cool and then we're going to prep our other ingredients. Now we need to prep our bananas because you can't have banana pudding without bananas. So I have six ripe bananas and here I have one that's a little bit overripe, starting to turn brown in some areas, but it's okay. I'm just going to cut off those ends and then cut them into medallions. Rinse and repeat with all six bananas, and you can always add more if you want. I feel like six is a decent amount, but if you prefer more, be my guest. If you recall earlier, we separated those egg whites from the egg yolks, and we will now make a meringue topping for the banana pudding that will be baked. So you can take a mixer, or you can technically do it by hand, although, oh man, it's a crazy arm workout, so I don't suggest it personally. But if you don't have a mixer, it, it is possible. We're going to keep beating those egg whites until it turns a foamy white before we add in 4 tablespoons of sugar. One tablespoon at a time. Beat the egg whites until they turn into medium to stiff peaks. I'll show you what it looks like right here. You can see the meringue is just hanging a bit, but it more or less keeps its shape. And so I think that's good enough for it to be baked as a topping. Grab your tray, your bananas, custard, meringue, and don't forget those Nilla wafers. I have yet to try with vanilla cake, but maybe one day. As we layer our banana pudding, preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Grab your custard and give it a good mix so that it will become smooth again. We will now pour in some of the custard as the base and spread it around the tray a bit. Then we will proceed to top it off with some of our bananas and Nilla wafers. Feel free to add as much as you like. Just remember, we're going to keep layering this, so don't put in too much. Then repeat the process with layer number two with the custard first, then bananas, and then finally Nilla wafers. In this tray, I like to do three separate layers, but you could do as much or little layers as you want. Just remember to use everything up because, you know, might as well not waste it, right? If you recall, we still have the meringue, so 
dollop some on top and then make sure to spread it as evenly as you can before we stick it into the oven. Once everything is nice and even and your oven is preheated to 400, stick it in there for I would say 8 to 10 minutes depending on how strong your oven is. Just make sure everything is nice and brown when you take it out. This is pretty much what you should be going for and oh man, I can't wait to dig in. Voila! There you have it, some baked banana pudding. I would say to let it cool down a bit before you stick it in the fridge and let it cool down completely because to be honest, I enjoy it more cold, but it's up to you. If you want to eat it warm and hot, <laughs> it's your choice. I hope you all give this a try because this is a pretty simple dessert to make. It takes a little bit of time, but not really hard to make in my opinion. Also, this is way cheaper than buying at Magnolia. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this requested video and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and follow my Instagram at WeCanCooks. Take it easy everyone.